Father God, on this Sunday morning, we pause once again in praise and adoration as Jackson sang that song a few moments ago, Holy Spirit, come to our dry bones and awaken us again, oh God, to the importance of loving you supremely above everything else in all of our, our lives. Father, thank you for these that have gathered here on this morning. I pray you would enrich them, encourage them, challenge each of us, oh God, that we might grow deeper in our faith and our walk with you. Help us, Lord, in our busyness not to become barren spiritually. In Christ's name we pray and all God's people said, amen. God bless you this morning. I want to speak on busy but barren. Out of the book of Luke chapter 10, it's a familiar passage of Scripture. It's a passage that you've read through the years many times. It's a passage that has been preached on hundreds of times throughout the years. But I want to ask some questions this morning and just let each one of us do a self-evaluation of where we are in our own life in light of the song Jackson sang a few moments ago. When uh, that song says, Awaken Within Me by Dry Bones, I could not help but think of this question, do you ever feel like you're doing a lot more things and getting a lot less things done in your life these days? Another question, do you feel like spiritually you're doing all the right things, but still you feel that emptiness in your heart and in your life you feel that unsatisfied feeling. I mean, you're reading the Bible, you're studying the Bible, you're maybe memorizing Scripture, you're witnessing to people that you encounter, you're attending church, uh, you're serving, you're ministering to others, you're teaching perhaps even a, a Bible study class. But even while you and I are scrambling from one religious activity to another, do you find your spiritual batteries are being less charged and charged? And are you finding that your spiritual batteries need a recharging this morning? Let me tell you, you and I can become involved in all of the events that are happening around us. We can become involved in many, many different aspects when it comes to our religious um, uh, uh, obedience, but producing sometimes less and less spiritual fruit. Maybe your Christian life has become m mundane. Maybe it's just become a routine thing that I do because, and yet I am always busy, but there is a barrenness in my busyness. Do you feel that life sometimes is like being on a treadmill and you don't know where to get off and you don't know how to get off as it spins around in your life. I think that we see more and more Christians today, perhaps more than ever before, that are running on empty. They're active, they're busy, but spiritually speaking, they feel very barren on the inside. What I want us to do is take a peek through the window of a home some 2,000 years ago. I want us to ease drop in on this interesting incident that happened during one of Jesus's visits into the home of Mary and Martha. In the book of Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42, in the NIV, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Now, I don't know about you, but when I read that story, 
to myself, Martha must have been what Tim LaHaye would have called a type A personality. She was a choleric, defined among his terms. Her characteristics would have been somewhat hot, somewhat quick, active, very practical, very strong-willed, often self-sufficient, motivated. She was driven, tends to be decisive, loves activity, and task-oriented. Are you of that personality here this morning? Mary, on the other hand, would be considered, as Tim LaHaye would say, a phlegmatic person in her personality. She is more people-oriented. She's rather, she would rather visit than vacuum. Maybe you're one of those people this morning. You'd rather visit than vacuum. Martha as well as Mary, both of them loved Jesus. In fact, it's Martha who opened up her home that day to Jesus. And verse number 38 tells us uh, that um, Martha is certainly not less spiritual than her sister Mary, but people like Mary drive people like Martha nuts in life. Any of y'all know what I'm speaking about? Are you a Martha in the world today? If you are, you will drive all the Marys nuts because of your decisiveness, because of your self-discipline, your own motivation, and the thing that is the driving force in your life. But notice in verse number 40, she said, Martha said to the Lord, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself. Now, this morning, what I want to give you are three, I believe, general truths that you and I can learn from the Martha and the Mary incident here in God's Word. Number one, if you're taking notes there in the bulletin, the blank, the symptoms of a life that is busy but barren. What are the symptoms of our lives that cause us to be busy but barren. When looking at Martha's life, there are three internal symptoms that can be flagged. These are signs of busyness, but barrenness. First of all, one of the symptoms we see is fatigue. Fatigue is the symptom of a barren life. I see some of you smiling out there. Obviously, you know what I'm speaking about this morning. We are all human. We get tired in our lives, but that's not the kind of tiredness I'm speaking about this morning. But what I do see as a symptom of barrenness is this deep abiding exhaustion. A deep abiding exhaustion. Let me tell you, that's when you go to bed tired, you wake up tired. And in verse number 40, we're told that Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. I dare say this morning, if each one of us were taking our own personal inventory of where we are in our spiritual journey uh, with the Lord Jesus, I confident of the fact that many of us would find that we are so distracted by many things that are happening in our lives. In fact, young people, look at Martha's life. Martha was busy. She's running. She's behind schedule. She's on the move. Uh, she wasn't making very much progress on her to-do list. Have you ever been there? You've got your to-do list to get through the week, through the day, through the month, through the year, and yet it just seems like the busier you become, the less you get accomplished. Martha was pushing. She was pushing herself hard, and she's probably experiencing exhaustion that many people are experiencing this morning all over the world. It goes deeper than just being physically drained and physically tired. It's a deep emotional, it's a spiritual depletion of energy. I guess our modern day term would be burnout. 
any of you burned out over anything that's going on in your life? You've just, uh, you're drained and drained and drained and you feel like you are running on empty and, and you certainly uh, uh, feel uh, exhausted uh, from all of the things that you're involved in. You see, in the Bible, I'm convinced that in the Christian life, that the Christian life should not be an exhausting life. I believe the Christian life should be a refreshing life. I believe that the Christian life should be a restful life, yet we are driven people. Uh, some of that we have learned uh, by certainly example. Uh, some of that we have learned because of the type of person, the individual personalities that each of us have. But I believe that the Christian life should be a life that's refreshing, a life that is joyous, a life that's restful. In fact, in Hebrews 4, 3 and 9 through 10, it describes our life in Christ as rest. In the book of Matthew chapter 11 and verse 29, Jesus said, take my yoke upon me and learn from me. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. You see, another symptom of a barren life that is busy is fear. Fear. Fear robs us emotionally. Fear drains us. And I believe that fear is a symptom of a barren life. In fact, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, Paul writes to his young friend in the faith. He said, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Philippians 4, 6 says, we are to be anxious for nothing. Let me ask you, is your life filled with anxiousness? Is your life this morning filled with anxiety? All of the things that you're dealing with, all of the things that have caused you to be distracted from the most important things in life. Let me tell you, listen to Martha once again. Listen to her distraction. Lord, do you not care? How many of us here this morning have said those same words, young people? Have you oftentimes said that in your own life? Lord, do you not care? Do you not care what I'm experiencing at school? Do you not fear what I'm experiencing in friendships and relationships and with bullying and all of the other facets that make up my daily life as a student in middle school or high school? Lord, do you not care? And Martha, she is frustrated, and she says, Lord, do you not care? Notice how she calls Mary. She doesn't even call her by name. She just said, my sister has left me to serve alone. And then notice the words that she gives to Jesus. She is very forceful. She is very demanding, and she says to Jesus, tell her to help me. Tell her to help me. Do you get what Martha's saying? She's troubled. She's worried about all the details of getting this meal done because, I mean, Jesus is in her house. Jesus is in her house. She's distracted from the kitchen duties and trying to get the meal prepared to wanting to be out there in the middle of what's going on. The King James Version, version says you're careful and troubled about many things. That's the way the KJV says that Jesus said to Martha, you are careful and troubled about many things. How many of you here this morning are troubled? How many of you here this morning, you hear my voice and you hear the noise of the rhetoric uh, that is being spoken, and yet at the same time, you are troubled about many things. You've got all kinds of things whirling on the treadmill of your mind this morning. Are you anxious? Are you troubled this morning? like Martha was about many things. Are you fearful? 
this morning. Are you anxious about circumstances in your life, about responsibilities? You see an anxious, anxiety-filled life. I believe can be a sign of barrenness because, because Christ does not give us this spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let me ask you a question. What are your nights filled with? Are your nights filled with insomnia? Can you not sleep because of worry? Can you not sleep because of details that have to be attended to throughout the week, throughout the day, throughout the month? Throughout the year, you see, I, I know what I'm speaking about here because I'm a Martha, and I drive the Marys in this world nuts. <laughs> I am a typical type A personality with a capital P. But God doesn't want us to spend our lives in worry and anxiety and fear. He wants us to trust him. He wants us to rest in him. The choir sang a few moments ago at the end of their choral piece. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, to trust in him. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. You see, if you and I are experiencing episodes of fear and anxiety, which is not caused by some physical condition, then we're probably a victim of being busy and yet barren. You can be accomplishing a lot of things in life. You can be busy all day long, but you can be barren and empty and drained on the inside. I believe that frustration and fear are some of these symptoms. Notice, I believe that frustration becomes this symptom as well. Do you get it, young people, that Martha was somewhat frustrated? I mean, she seems, depending on, I suppose, the way you read the narrative of what Luke has to say, she seems a bit angry to me. Listen to her. Lord, don't you even care that my sister has left me to do all the work alone. I mean, she doesn't even bother to say her name, Mary. I mean, my sister. And, oh yes, she was definitely frustrated, but I think that Martha was also probably somewhat a bit angry. I wonder if, if her anger, if her frustration was not only with her sister, maybe she was frustrated with her Savior. Lord, don't you care? How many of us in our own lives every day think if we don't speak it, we at least often think it, Lord, don't you care? Lord, don't you care that I'm struggling with this, that I'm struggling with that? Lord, I mean, where are you? I can't help but wonder if Martha was somewhat frustrated. She's obviously disgusted with her sister, but I can't help but feel that she is also frustrated with her Savior. The way she says, Lord, don't you care? And tell her, tell her. We begin to secretly blame God for the problems that's going on in our life. We fail to remember that many times we have manufactured those problems that exist in our life, and Martha is very frustrated in these moments. Lord, don't you care that my sister in helping me? Notice Martha doesn't call her by her name. Martha was frustrated not only with her sister, perhaps with her Savior, but I believe that Martha is also frustrated about her service. Verse 40 says, Martha was distracted by all the preparations. Are you busy this morning? 
Are you barren this morning, spiritually speaking? Uh, maybe you're frustrated with your service. Maybe you are so distracted by all of the other things that are out there that you're not even pleased and happy with what you're doing. The King James Version, Version says that Martha was cumbered about with much serving. Verse 41, uh, Jesus said, Martha was worried and upset about many things. Let me ask you a question this morning. Are you upset? Are you worried about many things? You see, serving and ministering was Martha's spiritual gift, but it seems that somewhere in the midst of her busyness, she has lost the joy and the satisfaction of service. And when you're barren spiritually, let me tell you, even in ministry, that you're gifted to perform and normally enjoy, sometimes it becomes burdensome. Uh, what about you? Do you ever find yourself becoming impatient? Do you find yourself during the day becoming short-tempered with someone? Maybe you're irritable. You're irritable with your spouse. You're irritable with your family. You're irritable with all kinds of problems and distractions. And you find yourself secretly angry at God. And secretly you're blaming him for your unpleasant circumstances that are happening in your life. Are you losing the sense of joy and satisfaction that you once felt, that you once received? in your spiritual service to the Lord. You see, spiritual barrenness produces frustration and anger in your life, and those are some of the symptoms of a life that's busy but barren, fatigue, fear, frustration. But let me tell you, this morning, let me give you another general truth that we can learn from the Mary and Martha incident here in Luke's Gospel. The second thing is the source the source of a life that is busy but barren. I can see in Martha at least two things that led to her active and busy but barren condition. Number one, our lives become barren whenever we are distracted from Christ. Our lives become barren whenever we are distracted from Christ. You see, the essence of the Christian life is not religious activity, but a vital living relationship with Jesus. Jesus is the source of our joy. Jesus is the source of our strength. Jesus is the source of our power. Jesus is the source of our righteousness. Jesus is the source of our life. Jesus is the source of our discernment. Jesus is the source of our wisdom. Are you and I this morning letting, letting things distract us from Jesus, who is our power source? That's what happened to Martha. She had, get this, the very Son of God sitting in her living room and she's worried about the dishes in the sink. She's worried, young people, probably about the laundry that needs to be done from all of the hurry and scurry in the kitchen. She's probably worried about the stain on the carpet. She's probably worried about the dinner menu and we could go on and on and on about the distractions that she's concerned about. But let me t ask a question to you and me this morning. What is it that distracts you from going deeper, growing deeper with Jesus? We could possibly make a laundry list this morning of all, all sorts of things that distract us from our lives, from our work, from our ministries. You see, even during times of worship, you and I can become so distracted that we fail to worship? Do you worship when you come to church? Are you so distracted by all of the things that you've got to do tomorrow? All of the things that you've got to count, uh, get accomplished by the end of the week or the end of the month? Are you so distracted that you fail to worship him? The Bible says God is a spirit 
And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Think about it. Look at Martha. Here she is. Her home she opened up. The very son of God. Young people, the creator of the universe. The resurrection and the life. The eternal almighty God. And he's sitting in her living room. And yet she's fretting over the dishes and the food. Think with me this morning about a distorted perspective and priorities. She had a distorted view of that particular situation. She had neglected the best things for some good things. Not that there was anything inherently wrong with all that she was trying to do, but all of the good things were keeping Martha from the best things, knowing and loving and serving Jesus more fully. Let me ask you a question, moms and dads. Are there any distorted perspectives or priorities in your life today? Are you neglecting your children in order to build your business or to climb the corporate ladder out there? Moms and dad, are you distorted? Are you, uh, do you have distorted priorities in your life today? Are you letting someone else rear your children while you seek your own personal satisfaction from your career, or a little more money to pay for things that really won't matter in the end, in the grand scheme of things. Let me ask you something. Dedicated Christian worker, are there any distorted priorities in your own personal life today? Are you so busy working for Jesus that you don't really have time to spend with Jesus Hey, ministry staff, pastor, youth minister, children's director, nursery director, minister of music, media minister, are we so caught up into the busy things that we do in life? Are we sacrificing our families on the altar of ministerial success? You see, when we all allow temporal issues and responsibilities to cause us to neglect the eternal priorities of family and prayer and fellowship with Christ and spiritual growth, then we have a distorted perspective on life. We become this busy person, but we become this spiritually barren person whenever we allow these things to distract us from Christ. And so, this morning, three general truths. We see the symptoms of a busy life that becomes barren. Secondly, we see the source of a life that's busy but barren. And lastly, we see the solution to a life that is busy but barren. Notice in verse 39 through 42, we won't read those again. But Mary is sitting at the Lord's feet. She's listening to what Jesus said. The least of the Mary's worries were food. She wasn't interested in the food. She was interested because Jesus had come to their house that day. And he was the central figure. He was the most important focus in the room and she chose, she made a conscious decision that she would stay out of the kitchen and she would be in the presence of the Lord Jesus. You see, Martha had let the cares of the day take away the joy that was in her heart. Martha was so busy, she was so caught up in the affairs of things that she's lost focus. And Jesus said, to Martha, one thing, one thing was needed to fix it all. And this morning, if you and I feel as though we're living a busy life and there's only one thing that you and I can turn to that will fix that. See, Mary had discovered it was not service for the Lord Jesus that was the most important, but it was her personal relationship of wanting to know Jesus more 
and more and more. We used to sing a song called Every Day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. Jesus saves and keeps me, and he's the one I'm living for. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Martha had forgotten that. Mary had kept it close to her heart. And on this particular day, when Jesus came to Martha's house, Martha would learn a great lesson that day. Mary would learn a lesson as well that she chose the better things over the busy things in life. Jesus Christ is more interested in what you do with him than in what you and I do for him. He's more interested in you than in anything you and I can do for him. We, we will never be any more for Jesus than we are with Jesus. Can you say this morning, Jesus is the solution to my issues, to my problems, to my worries, to my fears, to my frustrations, to my lack of focus that has caused me to become so spiritually barren and dry. You see, Jesus is still the answer. Though time and ages roll, Jesus is still the answer. He's the answer for your soul. And though some may say he doesn't fit with their philosophy, I know Jesus is the answer. He's always been and always will be. And Jackson, in the song that you sang a few moments ago, it just encapsulates what I believe you and I have eavesdropped in 2,000 years ago in a house that was no different than a home today. We all become distracted. We all become too busy. And in our too busyness, even though we may be doing good things, we fail to do the best things, and that is to focus on Jesus and Jesus alone. Would you stand as we pray together? Father God, as we come to the close of this service today, thank you for the lessons that you teach us, the life lessons that we can all relate to. We can all relate to a home. We can all relate to people being in the house. We can all relate to all of the hecticness that takes place in preparing a meal and doing all of those things. It's really easy for us to lose focus. It's really easy for us to forget what are the better things in life over the good things in life that we choose. God, I pray today for moms and dads that they will focus upon the best things in life for their families. I pray, oh God, that their perspectives, their priorities will be to love their families more fully, more deeply. I pray, oh God, that their home would be a household of faith. I pray it would be a home that would be filled with the love of Jesus and the light of Christ and the word of Christ being a light to their path in a very troubled, messy world that we live in today. God, remind us of the Marys and the Marthas and which is best, and that is to be focused on Jesus and not distracted by the things of life. Father, if there's someone here this morning that needs to give their heart and life to you, Holy Spirit, speak to them, I pray. If there's someone here this morning that needs a church home, may this be the home they choose. If there's someone here this morning that needs to come and pray at these altars about any specific need or to intercede for someone else, Father, Holy Spirit, move 
accordingly, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.